Welcome to part 2 of the IB Experts Database Objects tutorial. Let's take a look at stored procedures. Here is Delete Employee. In the Procedure Editor, you can see the source text. IB Expert offers a choice of two view modes, Standard and Lazy Mode. You can switch from one to the other using this button. The standard mode displays the procedure header and everything as you would expect from any tool. The lazy mode displays the input parameters, output parameters, variables and cursor definitions more clearly and simply. If you know how to declare these then by all means use the standard text mode. For those of you who do not wish to alter modes all the time by constantly clicking the button, go to the Options menu item, Object Editor Options, and specify, for example, that you wish to always start the lazy mode in the Procedure Editor, or, if preferred, the Standard mode. In this procedure, you can see a series of commands, for example, the variable any sales is defined here. It is set to zero and then calculated with a count from the sales table. Here it determines how many entries are directly affected by the deletion of this employee. And if the number of sales processes is more than null, then an exception should be triggered, stopping the procedure from executing any further. If this condition is not met, then a pr procedure is continued setting the employee value to an empty, undefined null value in the department table. The procedure then does the same in the project table, where the employee was specified as team leader. Following this, he is deleted from the employee project table, where projects were assigned to the employee. Then, the employee is deleted from the salary history table. And finally, the employee is deleted from the employee table. The execution sequence here is important to allow for dependencies such as foreign keys. At the bottom, you can see a couple of warnings. These allow you to check the procedure when working in the IB Expert Procedure Editor. We will look at this more closely in a separate tutorial. You can create as many procedures as you like in a database and procedures are extremely flexible. These can be executed using the execute procedure command. They can also execute themselves or be started by other procedures. A special case of a procedure is the trigger. A trigger is really nothing other than a procedure that is automatically executed when a certain event occurs. Let's look at the set employee number trigger. Here its name is declared. It applies to the employee table. It is positioned at zero, as you can define multiple triggers for the same operation on tables. The trigger is active and it is time to trigger before the event. And here you can say, for example, it should be executed each time an insert and or an update and or a delete is made. This trigger is declared for a before insert command position 0. And here it does exactly the same as an auto increment field in other constructions. But we'll look at that more closely when we create a new table. When a new entry in the employee number column in this table is empty, or undefined, then the trigger fetches a number, using this function from a generator. And the generator is increased by an increment of 1 before returning the number. Generators are the next objects we will take a look at. Let's take a look at the trigger in the standard mode. We can declare a trigger this way using create or alter trigger, followed by the trigger name for the table name, with the property active. 
You can also create triggers as inactive or set to inactive at a later date if you do not wish them to execute automatically for any reason. Before insert, at which position? And here is the sequence within this position, i.e. position 0 is executed before position 1. And then between the as begin and end, you can see the trigger source text. OK, let's take a look at a generator. This generator currently has the value 145. If I were to add a new employee, the field employee number would receive the number 146. Even working in large networks, generators are 100% reliable. You will never get two generated numbers of the same value from a single generator. These values are always called using the GenID function, as we saw earlier in the trigger. In this trigger, we also saw an exception called Reassign Sales. This is nothing other than a user-defined error message. For example, if you wish to delete an employee, as we saw earlier in the procedure, and this employee still has a couple of uncompleted sales processes in the system, you can create a user-defined error message which ensures that no user is able to delete this employee in any way whatsoever. Anyone trying to do this will automatically receive this error message. And of course, you can create as many exceptions for your database as you wish. UDFs. These are user-defined functions. Here you can see two system UDFs, which aren't important for us at the moment. I'll come back to discuss these at a later stage. UDFs are functions which you can use, for example, for upper and lower case, as well as a huge range of operations, increasing and complementing the range of commands covered by the Firebird Service SQL language. Roles are role or group definitions. Since Firebird 2.5, there is the new system role, RDB dollar admin. You can define your own roles and give these roles or groups privileges and rights. A user can then be granted membership to such a group, automatically assigning him all privileges assigned to that role, in addition to the rights he already has been given as a user when he logs in using the role name. Indices are listed here separately, and all indices defined for all tables can be viewed here, including system indices, the red ones here. System indices are generated automatically when you, for example, define a foreign key. The scripts are an IB Expert feature. We'll come back to those in a separate tutorial. We hope this tutorial has been of help to you and look forward to presenting our next subject soon. Goodbye for now from all of us at IB Expert. <laughs>